Hi, Gerald MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the greatly expanded, award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook. Several years ago, the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, decided that access to veterinary antibiotics was too easy for the average citizen. They announced that there would be an increased stewardship of these drugs, which are lifesavers in survival settings, in the future. Thus began the implementation of Industry Guidance Number 213, also known as the Veterinary Feed Directive, or VFD. This action was meant to discourage the use of veterinary antibiotics and hopefully decrease antibiotic resistance. While this directive applied to food producing livestock, there was no actual rule against access to antibiotics used in the pet trade, specifically those targeting aquarium fish or pet birds. Despite this, if writing was on the wall, large distributors like Thomas Labs, maker of fish mocks and other brands, quietly ended their line of products. Other producers rose to fill the void, but the selection was less and availability not as reliable. Recently, the FDA issued Industry Guidance Number 263, a ruling that all remaining over-the-counter, medically important veterinary antibiotics should be transitioned to prescription only by June 2023. Product labels will now state caution. Federal law restricts this drug to use by or on the order of a licensed veterinarian. This is more than just an inconvenience to livestock owners. What does this mean for the preparedness community? The original article I wrote on fish antibiotics about, gosh, about 15 years ago, was meant to give the off-grid medic a way to keep long-term disaster survivors from succumbing to minor infections that might turn into life-threatening ones. That concern still exists today, and you might agree we're no less likely to suffer a major catastrophic event today than we were then. Given the world today, maybe more. Having antibiotics around would save lives if the medical infrastructure collapsed. Not having them? Well. Websites that address this issue state that there will be no more OTC, non-prescription feed antibiotics available for use in food animal species. Unless you're in the habit of eating your pet goldfish, however, there doesn't seem to be a specific ban on currently available aquarium meds. Some sites do note, however, the rules apply to companion animals as well. Let's hope you're not quite that close to the fish in your aquarium. The FDA has its reasons for wanting to control veterinary antibiotics. A few years back, 73% of total antibiotic use in the United States was in the food livestock industry. This was not meant to treat infection, but given because animals fed antibiotics seemed to mature faster and get to market quicker. Now it's rapidly becoming illegal to use them for that purpose. Producers now need to obtain authorization from a licensed veterinarian to use them for prevention, control, or treatment of a specifically identified disease. Nonetheless, limiting the preparedness community's ability to access veterinary antibiotics for stockpile purposes will mean lives lost in the event of a long-term disaster event. Even if a person has a relationship with a licensed veterinarian, how many vets will even see small animals like a pet rodent, maybe a chicken, or a parrot? If they do, how many will see a sick guppy? The amount of veterinary antibiotics the preparedness community puts in their medical storage is not even a drop in the bucket compared to the total used. Having said that, I would guess the government will eventually get around to controlling every aspect of our lives. This will be no different. If you're the family medic and are concerned about a scenario where infections may run rampant among your people, consider getting a supply while they're still available. I'm not suggesting using any of your stockpiled antibiotics in normal times without the supervision of a qualified medical professional. I'm talking about the availability of medications like these for long-term off-grid survival settings. A source that still offers a selection of over-the-counter fish antibiotics is fishmoxfishflex.com. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times are bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, learn more about antibiotics and 200 other off-grid medical topics in the award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook. Plus, check out Alton's Antibiotics and Infectious Disease, The Layman's Guide. And don't forget to put your family on the road to medical preparedness with quality kits and individual supplies from our entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.